Welcome to another Nerd Soccer Podcast. This is Greg Valoria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter, and you are? I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. Welcome back. Good stuff here, man. So, uh, first story, Thank Google, you. Google, Google. Chromebox, Google. Chrome, Chrome, Chrome. Yeah. It's not a Facebook uh, podcast this week. So, anyway. What's uh, the story? Thanks to Giga Ohm, uh, Ohm Malik, who doesn't write that often anymore, but he actually wrote this story. Uh, uh, Google and its partner, Samsung, are launching the new... Chromebook and Chromebox um, targeting at the educational corporate customers. Does that sound familiar, Apple? Right. <laughs> anyway, the Chromebook from uh, Samsung is just like any other 12.inch uh, budget laptop, uh, while you know the Chromebox is a tiny PC that you can connect, connect to any keyboard, mouse, and monitor, just like the Mac Mini. Uh, the Chromebook starts at around 449 and an entry level price of about 329. And, but they're both powered by powerful Intel Core processors, four gigabits of RAM, Display Port, USB ports, gigabit Ethernet, dual band Wi-Fi, just like the Mac Mini, isn't it? Hmm. Doesn't that sound familiar to you? Kind uh, of. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, I, I thought that was kind of interesting news. I mean, it, it, I guess uh, Android or you know Google gets into the gets into the uh, the connect connect anything you want to me game. So I don't know, um, man. I, I I don't like these things, man. I don't like the, I don't see the value proposition here. You know what I mean? What are you talking? Four to five hundred bucks, and you know it's let's well not yeah. only that. Let's talk about the hardware itself. It's it's right. basically okay. it's a it's a laptop, right? But but the operating system it's a web based computing device. Laptop. So why the That's hell right. do you need six USB ports, right? If this is like a full internet, I mean the <laughs> applications are web pages, right? I mean it's exactly. all HTML five predominantly. There's a little bit of usage of Flash here and there. Um but but it's it's all web apps for everything. You know why the hell would you need any sort of USB device? It's There's... supposed to connect to the cloud, so that's that's the whole deal with this Six thing. Six USB it's, it's, ports? Yeah. Come on! Uh, what? I don't know. You know, and an, I think and, and a hardcore it, Intel processor. So what? You know, I, it you're... ends up being a Google TV entry device. It's a browser. Think, but, uh, it's a browser. It's a browser. It's a browser. And for that value prop, I don't see the value proposition to be honest with you. And that four or five hundred. Uh, price point too. You're competing with the iPad, yeah. right? And at that point, yeah, you, absolutely. What, what's some consumer going to go in? Well, or are they going to get the, an, a slick iPad or, or you know, one of these? Yeah, I don't know where the marketing was with this. I guess they were <laughs> trying to target the Mac Mini, but Mac Mini's at what seven ninety nine? Is that is that a six ninety nine? Yeah, yeah, like uh -huh. that? yeah, roughly five yeah. ninety. Yeah, five six. Uh huh. D depending, yeah. So you're right. I, I don't and see the value proposition either. Yeah. So. Weird, you man. know, it's it's a uh, it's a cloud device that's for six hundred dollars. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to see about that. Yeah, yeah, I think we have been seeing for a year now, right? Of nothing, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That operating system was uh, was was uh, introduced in two thousand eleven, wasn't it? Yeah, man. So, I or mean, even earlier. Yeah. I don't know. I think it might have been even earlier. Yeah. But uh, or May of two thousand eleven, I think. You know, they they were trying to announce this Chrome OS thing, right? So yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yikes. After two years of trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another announcement. <laughs> Reannouncing <laughs> how awesome it is. Yeah. Anyway, let's go to the next one. I think we kicked that, <laughs> that one to death. Uh, what's the next story about Facebook auto sharing? Uh, yeah, man. Feature? Yeah, man. So this is uh, Facebook auto sharing apps uh, get a little less creepy, uh, but you should still <laughs> avoid them, uh, says Whitson Gordon of Lifehacker. Thanks, uh, Whitson, for this story. So most of you have probably seen Facebook's new frictionless sharing apps is what they're calling them, right? Like Social Cam or even the Washington Post uh, Social Pretty Reader. Awesome. Nice. Uh, pop up uh, in your newsfeed, automatically sharing videos your friends have watched, probably without them even realizing it, right? Uh, in doing so, they give the app permission to publish the fact that they watch that video to their newsfeed. And every time they watch a social cam video thereafter, and thus the app begins to spread amongst your friends at uh, best creating more spam. You know, this kind of seems like it's spamming your timeline, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, Facebook's yeah. new rule sure. states that, uh, so Facebook's trying to do something about it and stating these new rules, supposedly, you know, that it's supposed to make a difference here. Facebook's new rule states right. that the apps like uh, this can no longer publish materials until someone has been watching or reading that link for more than 10 seconds. Uh, it also requires those apps to be perfectly clear about the fact that every time you visit a link using that app, the material will be published on Facebook. Uh, in addition, they say that developers should also allow opt-out mechanisms in their app so users don't have to publish this material to Facebook. Uh, you should still probably avoid these apps as Lifehacker. Um, 
and encourage your friends to do the same. Uh, if you uh, <laughs> you think an article or video really looks interesting, you're probably better off just Googling the title rather than reading it through an app that's going to spam all your friends. Uh, or better yet, hide those apps uh, from your newsfeed altogether and just just call it a day, man. But wow. uh, Greg, wow. so let's talk uh, something a little more important here. The UN, what's going on here? Well, thanks to Matthew Ingram of Gigom, another Gigom story here uh, the, via Twitter. Um, so... Uh, even as the internet control bills like SOPA, PIPA, were making their way through the Senate and House of Representatives earlier this year, uh, there was another potential firestorm just brewing, uh, uh, Matthew writes, uh, and one expected to erupt right in a matter of months in Dubai. That's because the International Telecommunications Union, ITU, an arm of the United Nations, wants to take over the management of the internet. A plan that will be hotly debated by member nations in Dubai, I'm sure. Uh, the rationale for the move, really, by the ITU seems to be because the Internet is a global entity. It should be managed according to global standards. Mm. At the moment, uh, control over the fundamental levers and gears uh, that underlie the Internet, including the domain name system, lies with ICON, uh, I-C-A-N-N, yeah. right, the Internet right. Corporation of Assigned Names and Numbers, right, <clears throat> which is a private U.S.-based nonprofit organization. So... Here we go again. You yeah. know, it's someone trying to control everything. What's this next story about? Apple turns over its inventory once every five days. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing here. So, yeah, this is a very interesting story, too. It's probably one of my more interesting to myself here. Uh, so thanks to uh, The Atlantic, He's Alex's uh, Madrigal, who wrote, who wrote this great piece. Yeah, so uh, part of a new report that from the technology research firm Gartner ranks Apple supply chain and best in the world. And it's pretty amazing uh, when you think about it. This is a company that sells hundreds of millions of hardware gadgets all over the world, yet it doesn't actually wow. need to stockpile its goods. That, uh, the only other company on Gartner's list of 25 companies that turns over its product faster is McDonald's, uh, which is not exactly McDonald's. in the electronics wow. business, right? Uh, Dell and no. Samsung rank two and three in Apple's category, turning over their inventory roughly once every 10 and 21 days, respectively. Uh, they calculated yeah. these times uh, from the report's inventory return metric, which estimates the number of times a company's inventory is sold in a given time period. Uh, Apple's number is 74. Uh, from there, it's common practice to divide by 365 to to, uh, quote, estimate the number of days of sales sitting in inventory, unquote. Uh, fascinatingly, wow. if you read about that inventory turn metric, you will find things like this, quote, although results vary by industry, typical manufacturing companies right. may have six to eight inventory turns per year. That's per year. Oh, yeah. High yeah. volume, yeah, low right. margin companies like grocery stores may have 12 or more inventory turns per year or more. You know, this is groceries. Wow. You know, we we buy these right. consumables that we eat. Right, and, right, know, they, right. They should go pretty quickly. We think in theory. Um, right. So a typical company in manufacturing might do eight inventory turns. Samsung Samsung does right. seventeen. Dell, which practically invented hardcore electronic supply chain management, does thirty six, and Apple is doing seventy four. That's incredible. Yeah. Seventy four inventory turns a year. Apple. In, Come on. It's insane. And it's better. And it's better than actual. Um, uh, goods that we actually purchase right. on a daily basis, and, and they're and they're just in their infancy in China, right? And in Asia, it seems like you know, and and throughout the yeah. developing world, uh, the untapped market potential is crazy for this company still. Right. Well, isn't that thanks to Tim Cook? Yeah, yeah, got it. Hats off to Tim Cook, man. Absolutely. This is this is definitely sort of a reflection on of his uh you know of his genius, right? And the company's genius, yeah. but yeah, his uh, stewardship for sure. So, Greg. I mean, yeah. Speaking yes. of uh, Google, well, actually, I don't know if you're speaking <laughs> of Google. That was horrible. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> why are you? Uh, why, why, what is this switching to Dropbox to Google about? What is this? Well, this writer from ZDNet, uh, uh, Lee uh, Yuen, uh, tested out the Google Drive, the new Google Drive, and he was pretty happy with it. Yeah. Um, uh, Google Drive is very fast uh, for uploading, downloading files. Uh, you know, he complained that his Dropbox was at the speed of uploading files was just poor. Right. Um, I, 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 I've experienced the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think I think the problem, the problem is that we're expecting these cloud devices to be as good as our hardware machines, but that's another story anyway. Right. Uh, Google Drive gives you more storage at lower prices. Um, uh, you know, Dropbox gives you about two gigs of free storage. We got Google Drive giving you five gigs for free. And for, uh, you know, a $20 uh, bill, you could get 400 gigabytes of Google Drive storage 
well, Dropbox only like drops you a hundred gigs. So mm. um, mm-hmm. th- there's another one there. Yeah. Um, Google Drive, he feels, in his opinion, works better for sharing videos. Um, and when you upload a video to Google Drive, it automatically tra- transcodes it into lower bit rates so that your recipients can watch the videos through a streaming flash player. Mm. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but, you know, just like with a lot of these devices, CPU utilization, you know, you always remind me, turn off your Dropbox before, right, you right. know, you get on this uh, podcast, Greg. Right. Um you know, he he said he had to actually kill Google Drive process because it was using too much CPU. Interesting. I thought that was pretty hilarious. Huh. I thought that was a little bit of a negative, don't wow, you think? Wow. Um, yeah. I so, got to do a but, test on that. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We should look at that. Um, maybe as a, like a nerd soccer uh, a test drive or mm-hmm. something like that. You know. So, but I thought it was it was good. Um, you know, they don't have a a, a, a client yet for iOS, but that mm-hmm. probably is coming. Um, but their mobile web uh, seems to work pretty good, in his opinion. So I, I thought that was kind of cool to bring up in this podcast and oh, well. get people away. Yeah, I mean, we, is, is, for NerdStalker, me and Greg, we use uh, Google Docs, right, to for our show notes right. and things like that, um, and our, our, our tear sheets or whatever. And, uh, Absolutely. And, and all that was is Google Docs. They just sort of rebranded as as Google Drive, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I, I think... And I would assume their video like uploading is probably just using YouTube technology. I I would guess to probably transcode so that you can watch this on any format, like like YouTube does. Absolutely. And as anyone can see here on the show, uh, Greg is pretty much running on like a fourteen four kilobit uh, dial up modem uh, by all this (laughs) pixelating and stuff over here. Versus uh, you're looking at WebPass right here, which is incredibly fast ISP. Oh my God! Yes, bang, yes. Bang, I, bang, I, I bang, those bang, uh, bang, those bang, hamsters bang. Uh, running the wheel for my power for my <laughs> yeah, internet. Yeah. Uh, As Greg is hacking hungry, into so. the Whopper. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh my God! <laughs> yes, yes. There is yes, no winner. Yes, yes. Next, uh, what is this about expanding the internet domain space? It almost sounds like an ICANN a UN thing that we just talked about. Right, right, right. Super nerdy, <laughs> right? This comes from the Google blog, actually. So, yes, it is indeed super nerdy. Uh, and I have to thank, uh, who is it? Uh, nice. Vin- Vint Cerf, actually, the chief inter- internet uh, evangelist at Google. Uh, so, in 2016, they're saying it's estimated that almost half of the world's population will be online. Yet, nearly 50% of the websites we visit are found online in the .com, top-level domain, what we're calling TLDs, right? Uh, Which has among the first TLDs created in 1984. Despite the great opportunities the web has enabled for uh, people around the world, there's still a lingering question about the diversity of the domain space, uh, given that the number of generic top-level domains has only increased by 14 in the last 28 years. Um, In 2008, ICANN, again, announced a program to expand the number of generic TLDs Think, uh, think.com, .org, .edu, remember that? Uh, developed through its bottom-up multi-stakeholder yes. process in which we participate. Given this expansion process, we dedicated, um, and this is all coming from Google, they dedicated to submit applications for new top-level domains, which generally fall into four categories. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Uh, there are trademarks like .google would be one. Domains related to their core business like .docs. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, domains that will improve user experience, such as dot .youtube, which can increase the ease with which YouTube channels and genres can be identified, and domains they think have interesting creative potential, such as dot .lol. Uh, so they're just beginning to explore the uh, <laughs> potential source of innovation on the web. So uh, very interesting, oh, sort of in this uh, cool. go-forward type of uh, thinking that we're seeing from one of the major internet companies here and these top-level domains. I mean, that'd be nice for us instead of having to tell people to go search for NerdStalker TV on our YouTube channel uh, for, for us to have something that said, you know, NerdStalker.YouTube. Go to NerdStalker.YouTube. Oh, you know? yeah. That would be fantastic. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool because it's not YouTube backslash 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 <laughs> yeah. backslash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One four six eight eight <laughs> you know. capital you know H yeah. Bang, yeah. Ash, or... yeah tilde six. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's do the speed on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're first up, my friend. What do you have there? All oh, right. So this one is a uh, nice one from uh, Boing Boing, actually. And thanks to Zenny Jardine, toddler kicked off uh, playing after <laughs> iPad deprivation uh, tantrum. So yeah, uh, a f- oh, this is, thanks gosh. to Boing Boing, as I said. A uh, family from Washington State had to cancel an island vacation where their flight was grounded after their three-year-old son pitched a tantrum. A uh, toddler had been quietly playing with the iPad while waiting for the plane to take off, the father said. When the iPad was taken away, you know how all electronics must 
be stowed away during uh, takeoff and landing. Uh, well, all hell broke loose, apparently. So Alaska Airlines oh, oh my gosh. Uh, says the matter boiled down to security issue. Uh, the child became so upset, he would not sit up straight and keep his seatbelt on, and the father could not control him. Uh, the airline offered the family a later flight, but the toddler isn't interested. Uh, apparently, uh, the kid just said, take me home, Dad. I, I don't want to fly. Speed round. PayPal takes on bold step ahead in the POS. Now, it, it isn't what you guys think. POS is point of sale transactions with an SMB. <laughs> but anyway, thanks so far. far ahead. Depends the how you look at it. The My <laughs> Venture Pet. Yeah, it depends how you look at it, I guess. Uh, PayPal is taking on bold steps towards uh, small and medium retail businesses, signing deals with two of the largest payment companies and more than a dozen new retail partners. So they're adding uh, retailers like uh, Barnes & Noble, Office Depot, Jamba Juice. So any of those terminals that you see that when you go to the store, it'll have a PayPal option now. And I, I've actually seen a couple uh, with that already. So it's been kind of interesting hmm. to see pe- PayPal as an option. Like uh, I think I was at the store the other day and PayPal was an option. No oh, wow. I mean, a grocery store. That was that was just incredible Tripping. when I saw that. Yeah, your parents pick better passwords than you is uh, mine. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, apparently so. So this is a from Zach. Thanks to Zach Epstein too. for uh, Boy Genius Report. For computer users apparently over the age of 55 employ passwords that are twice as secure as passwords used by those under 25 years old. Uh, so much for the tech youngsters, right, or whatever. Young people, as we say in the media, or whatever. A uh, recent study conducted by yes. Joseph Bonnier, a computer scientist at the University of Cambridge, analyzed almost 70 million passwords belonging to uh, Yahoo users around the world. Uh, ensuring that data was kept anonymous and passwords could not be tied to individual accounts, Bonnier looked at uh, password strength alongside other data such as age and locale. Uh, beyond the relationship between mm. age and security, the researcher found that German and Korea speakers uh, generally use the strongest passwords, and the presence of credit card data on a user's account seemingly does not prompt that user to avoid weak passwords such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, Bonnier's study oh, was, work was the largest of its kind, and he unveiled his findings at the Symposium of, uh, on Security and Privacy in San Francisco uh, earlier this month. Well, VPOL is a concept that could be the next generation utility uh, poll. So uh, Gene uh, Brionis from uh, Uber Gizmo gave me this story. Um, VPOL is a slim modular utility poll connected to underground optical wiring. So it could be installed in urban settings, you know, giving uh, neighborhoods Wi-Fi access, uh, LED street lighting at the same time, uh, electrical vehicle charging, they say, parking transactions, you know, you name it. You know, anything that is common on the sidewalk, they want to put all in one pole and allow you to access it that way. So even a neighborhood bulletin board, they would say. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. So anyway, catch that one. That's a kind of a neat thing. It's That's just cool. it, It's more of a conceptual thing, but yeah, I thought it was like kind it. of cool, mm-hmm. right? All yeah. right. So, Greg, how about a tip of the week? Okay, well, for all you people who use your iPhone and, and, and when you get w- w- awakened at about 2 a.m. because someone either texted you or tweeted you or something you, um, they they designed this new uh, dock that swallows your iPhone and it gives you a, a nice warm light that glows fast when a message comes in. So, you know, thanks to... Uh, uh, Gizmodo for that one. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, it's basically the char- it's a charging dock at the same time and hides your iPhone all the way inside. So um, I thought, yeah, check that out. Um, it was kind of a cool concept. I thought, you know, so you don't like, you know, you know, wake up to your iPhone in the middle of a uh, night like all of us do. Yeah, you cool, know, because we just got we retweeted on Nerd Stalker. Right anyway. On. So yeah. So my tip is uh... anyway. What's your tip? Yeah, so my tip is called Clean My Drive. It's uh, thanks to Lifehacker yet again, uh, Adam Dacus, um, which is, this is, uh, you can get this at the Mac App Store OS X. Uh, whether connected to a Mac or a Windows PC, your external drives can be accumulated junk files creating by the, created by the operating system. Clean My Drive is an app that targets those files and automatically and wipes them, cleans and wipes them, and help you avoid wasting many space. It's it's a really neat utility. Uh, the UI is really, really slick, really neat. It's it, indeed one mm. of those things you mm. kind of install and you can let it automatically just sort of do its thing, right? So uh, uh, we create a lot of log files, these really weird dot extension files that sometimes you don't need on the Mac um, when you put USB drives nice. in, in your machine and on other machines and things like that. And what this app does is just sort of invisibly cleans up a lot of a lot of that mess, which can really pile up on your machine. So give it a try. It's called Clean My Drive. Uh, go to the Mac App Store, do a search for Clean My Drive, and, uh, and, you know, give it a go. So, Greg, what do we got coming up? 
Oh, we got SF New Tech this week, June 6, Wednesday, uh, 119 uh, Mighty uh, in San Francisco. Uh, we got the French coming on board. Woo-hoo. We got six startups from the from the French quarters. Well, not you know, the French quarter of the world. Yeah, or, yeah. It's not really a quarter of the world, French but part of the world. anyway, <laughs> not the yes. They, they think it's a quarter. It's a quarter or of the world. The part of the world called anyway. France. Right, okay. Yeah, exactly. Actually, they they the really believe that. No, yeah, I know. I haven't figured that one out. No yet, offense actually, to our but, uh, Montreal uh, viewers and listeners, right? Because yeah. <laughs> they are French speaking as well. Or our New Orleans uh, listeners. There you go. Yes. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, we have six startups coming up to Mighty. Uh, it's uh, the third time they've presented here on the SF New Tech stage awesome. here in uh, in the U.S. and uh, San Francisco. So uh, catch us. Uh, 5.30, uh, doors open, and at 7.30, pitches start. We'll be on Ustream. Uh, B-Trax will be streaming it live okay. uh, on sfnewtech.com. Uh, so yeah. just a reminder, yeah. everyone, if you want to you know, sub- you know, submit some stories for us to, to consider, please uh, use the hashtag uh, NRDSDK. And go to nerdstalker.com just for the whole thing, you know, the whole shebang and kit and caboodle. Or just go to iTunes and make your life really easy and subscribe to our either audio or video podcast. Uh, there Please. and uh, give us a nice uh, uh, rating. How about a five star? That'd be fantastic. Or as I mentioned earlier, go to YouTube and do that search for Nerd Stalker TV, all one word, Nerd Stalker TV. Absolutely. And uh, thanks and thanks so much. I am Adolfo Ferranda. If you want to reach me, you can email me at Adolfo Nerdstalker dot com or uh, at Nerdstalker on Twitter. How about you, Greg? How do we get a hold of you? You can hold me at so- socialgreg at nerdstalker.com, or you can re- reach me on my Twitter at socialgreg. Um, I respond to everyone. You know, a lot of good, pe- a lot of good tweeters out there, so it's good. Right on, right on. So anyway, all right. Hey man, have, have a, a great good week. week out there. Be careful out there. Right yeah. Out. See you guys.